Good evening. I built this utility oscillator to test receivers. When I put this close to the receiver, I can follow that signal through the receiver to find out if there's a problem in any of the stages. This one is 80 meters. I can put a 40 meter crystal in here and it'll work just fine. And this is just a tool for testing simple receivers. But it uses a 9 volt battery. But I don't always want to use a 9 volt battery. So I want to make a battery eliminator. So I'll build a 9 volt power source that uses a wall wart as input supply and supplies 9 volts to this. I use this 5 position clip instead of a circuit board because circuit board is not needed. And I have a 78L09. This isn't a high current regulator, but that's okay. I don't need high current. So I'm going to solder this straight onto here. Makes sense to put ground on first because it establishes a mechanical contact that'll hold it for the rest of the, uh, the soldering. Okay, I'm going to put a diode on this side for the input to prevent reverse polarity. But before I do that, I'll put an input supply to it just to test to be sure the regulator is working before I move on. I'm going to use a 2.1 millimeter jack and that will allow me to plug in a wall wart. Everybody has a thousand of those anyway. Okay, the reason I'm testing this is I don't want to build the whole thing and it not work and then wonder which stage. If I test it as I go, I don't know what stage. So I should see 12 volts on the input and I should see 9 volts on the output. 8.64, I'm kind of okay with that. A 9 volt battery is only 9 volts until you start using it. Okay, so I want to put a diode in to prevent reverse voltage. This is a recycle from some power supply that I took apart. So I'll remove this and put this in its place. Okay, and we'll test again. The voltage from the supply is 12.3. The voltage after the diode is 11.79. So 8.7 regulated, close enough. Okay, I also want to use an LED to tell if the power is on or off. And I also want it to be remote from this so that I can mount it in a box. So I'm just going to take two wires and extend it. I've already soldered out the resistor to the LED and that goes to ground. That resistor is to limit the current. And that's lit. I've got that on the 12 volt side and I used a 500 ohm resistor. If you do that with different supply voltages, that's when I have to change, of course. Okay, so we have input, we have an output, but no way to get it off of there yet. And we have something to tell us if it's on. We have something for reverse voltage, and we have a voltage regulator. So now, I already made up this pigtail for a 9 volt battery. Okay, I'm going to wire it so when I offer voltage to something, the other side thinks this is a battery. In this case, the solid wire is going to be positive. And the other side will go to negative. So I have power because the LED is lit. Let's test this against the battery. Okay, so I'm going to test the battery. And the battery is going to say 6 volts. But the key thing is that it's a positive. So I'm going to touch this on the feed I have. And it's, it's offering positive 8.8 .8 volts. So the circuit is going to think that this is a battery. That's exactly what I want. Now I need a case. I picked up a bunch of these little cases a couple years ago at a ham fest for $2 a piece. Bought 20 of them. Um, I've already put holes in here for power and the LED. Well, first off, I had to find a way to get this through there. The easiest way to do that is to un uh, unsolder it. So I'm going to this through here. And what's going to happen is when I want to use this, I'll just pull this out, plug it in. Okay, so how are we going to get it in there? We're going to use hot glue to mount that. Very low tech, 
very effective. Very underappreciated method of mounting stuff. Okay, so I got hot glue. I'm going to remove this. Place it down in here. Now, this is messy and my soldering skills are atrocious, but this is pretty ugly construction and it doesn't need to be any better. So I've got the LED where I want it. I'm gonna hold it on the outside with a pair of pliers and then I'm going to hot glue around it. Yeah, that looks like a glob mess, but you gotta give it enough to let it stick. Also gotta let, also gotta let it dry. So I can just hold it there while it dries and get ready for this one. To hold the 2.1 jack in place, it's easy just to put in the power. And there you go. Held in place. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I wanna get a little bit of glue under it to stabilize it because I wanna be pushing against it. Oh, looks like I ran out of glue. So that's dried. Let this dry. Since it's powered up, you can tell that it's still working by the LED being on. Okay, that's pretty good. This slips out in and out pretty easy. This is my supply. I wanna check this and make sure there's no wires touching that shouldn't be. Check my output and see if it's still working correctly. 8.87, that's as close to nine as we're gonna get. At least with this measurement and this supply. But it, it's exactly what I wanted. Okay, so now I just need to put it together, put the screws in it. And everything needs a label. There we go. So this is the state it'll be in when it's not in use. All sealed up. When I want to use it, I'll plug this in. Tells me that it's on. I pull this out. I have an easily adaptable power supply cable. So here's my Altoids 10. When I want to use this, I'll simply connect it in. So if we want to see it's working, supply and power to the oscillator. Let's get out the frequency counter. Luckily my MFJ antenna analyzer has a frequency counter function. I put a B and C connector on there that terminates to two cables. So I've got the ground hooked up. I'll touch the signal output. 3.575. So this thing thinks that's a battery, it doesn't know the difference. Exactly what I wanted. I don't wanna to have to carry a battery all the time with that. If I wanna truly isolate this, I can use a battery, but it's much easier to have these little power supplies laying around. So I've got my test oscillator. I've got my nine volt power supply. So let's take this one step further. Why am I limited to nine volts? Can I not use eight volts? Five volts? That one doesn't have a label, but it's 12 volts. And they all have the same pigtail. So Whatever equipment I have, and I built a lot of these things in little Altoid tins, I can use the battery clip from a nine volt to supply five volts. Doesn't matter. So that's just a common interface for me. And anytime I have a nine volt battery that goes dead, I take this clip out so that I can use it on something else. So there you go, a versatile battery eliminator circuit. I'll post a link to the schematic in the description. Take you to my website. You can see a little bit more information about this. So we've got a battery eliminator circuits here, different voltages, very versatile. If you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.